Well, welcome to Retro Crush. I'm Robert Berry, and we are here with one of the world's greatest legendary actors, Malcolm McDowell, here at Sacramento's Witch Palooza. How are you doing today, Malcolm? Great, thank you. Great. Had my coffee. Got your coffee there. Now, you used to—I read you used to sell coffee uh, before That's you right. started your acting career. I did, indeed. What, what was uh, it like being a coffee uh, salesman? It was tough because day? you know the English—they love their tea, and um, so I was breaking into new territory, trying to persuade sort of the English who are very fond of their tea uh, to try coffee instead. They were like, "I don't think so." <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, it was kind of fun. I had f fun doing it. I, I always like to think of it as my drama school. Kind of, kind of helped prepare you for uh, the sort future. Of. You had to do a lot of acting. Now you were fortunate uh, very early on to work with some of the the world's greatest uh, filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Stanley Kubrick and uh, A Clockwork Orange. I mean, looking back on that, do you, do you feel that that sort of spoiled you for future filmmaking? To or you know, how would you compare your experiences working with Kubrick to uh, other films that you've had later on? Well, you can't really compare Kubrick. You know, he's he was one of the greats, and sure. um, I got very lucky. I did a great movie with him, and the movie's still very pertinent today. You know, and, and people still love it, and it's just amazing how that film has um, become a sort of legendary film. Um, you know, I, I work with a lot of great ones, um, Lindsay Anderson and people like that. And in later years, I worked with uh, Robert Altman, who I loved. Sure. He was a great American director, really authentic American voice. And, you know, even the so called bad films of Altman are really, to me, fantastic <laughs> to watch. You know, yeah. I love him. And I love him, and uh, sadly, he's gone now, but. Um, um, so I've been very, very lucky. I've worked with some great people, and, and you know, that's what really counts at the end of the day. And when you look back, um, the marvelous people that I've been fortunate enough to work with. Yeah, you've had quite a diverse career. I bet, I bet you'd, be, you'd be hard pressed to come up with, uh, you know, your, your your five favorite films that you've ever made. Even huh? just just so uh, much to choose from, huh? Well, yeah, yeah and I also there's the obvious ones that were hits, you know, but. Sure. I'm always rather fond of the ones that nobody's ever seen because um, for one reason or another, you know, I made a, um, a very interesting movie in the Soviet Union or, or it was the Soviet Union at the time in 1990, just as it was all breaking apart. Which film was this? It was called The Assassin the of Assassin the Tsar. Of the the Assassin of the Tsar. Okay. Um, it was a Russian movie made by a Russian director with a Russian cast. Oh, wow. And it was... Uh, one hell of an experience to be there playing a Russian you know I think I was the the first foreign actor to be asked to play a Russian in a Russian movie Wow so it was quite an honor really it was an amazing experience and you were on location within Moscow during the filming or I was in uh, yeah Moscow and Vladimir which is an old capital and um, we shot um, all over the place you know and um, it was really amazing. I read a, an interview with you recently where you were commenting about how um, almost senselessly violent some films, horror films, mm -hmm. are uh, as of late. And uh, I was curious if you find it ironic, you know, looking at a film like A Clockwork Orange, which for the time was brought out as sort of the poster child. Uh, violent and mm. movie but it, and even I guess it was banned in the UK for some time as well it wasn't banned Kubrick oh. withdrew it oh he withdrew it because of some censorship requests no or, or, because he was he, he got some death threats oh wow and so to him and his family so he decided uh, he was advised by Scotland Yard to withdraw the film which he did wow but you know uh, Clockwork Orange really is not that violent. No, that's, movie, that was yeah. my point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, the violence in it is more psychological, and you know, I mean, films that I've done with Rob Zombie are really violent. <laughs> Rob is he doesn't hold back. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't stab once; it's repeated. <laughs> um, so, you know, but Rob is an artist too, and he's he's not 
just a slasher director. You know, he's, there's more to him than that. And um, but you know, those films are pretty violent. So there's no question about it. You know, horror films these days they always have to one up everybody else. So you know, what do you do? How do you scare people? Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting how those evolve. I mean, it's just uh, it's like you said. It seems like it's more about how much you can show versus yeah. the See, the I draw that. Aspect. Things that really scare me are things like Rosemary's Baby or something of that ilk. The Exorcist, which I thought was an amazing horror film. True. Sure. You know, scary in a, in a sort of psychological way. So um, that's more scary to me than just seeing some stuntman, you know, right, right. chop away. We're doing a feature on um, the 100 greatest movie musical moments musical moments in film not not necessarily just for musicals yeah and um, our readers um, very popularly suggested uh, you're singing in the rain bit wow from the clockwork orange they is think... one of their favorites well and uh... <laughs> I am very honored about that but but you know I didn't originate singing in the rain sure sure uh, a gentleman called Gene Kelly did and I've heard of him yes you've heard of him um, <laughs> well as you know you know when Singing in the Rain came out, and for generations and generations of people, him, you know, swinging around that lamppost and slapping in that water and singing in the rain is one of the most euphoric moments that we've ever seen on film. And so when, you know, I had to come up with something um, for this sequence that was involved my character, you know, in a very brutal situation, um, that's when he's happiest. So singing in the rain just popped out. You know, I just started to sing it, and Kubrick went and bought the rights, and then we re we redid the whole thing and, and incorporated it. And a footnote to that is, I, a year afterwards, when the film had been out and it was a big hit, uh -huh. I was invited to come to Hollywood by Warner Brothers and. Uh, I came out and it was, uh, you know, very nice to meet everybody. I'd never been to Hollywood before. And some guy who was my minder said, Hey, there's a, a, a party in Beverly Hills tonight, Malcolm. Do you want to go? And I went, He said, There are going to be lots of stars there. And I went, Yeah, I'd love to see. Yeah, wow. I was like a kid in a candy store. Uh -huh. And we go, then he went, Hey, you won't believe this. Gene Kelly's here. Would you like to meet him? I went, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he had, his, he had his back to me and he tapped him on the shoulder. He sort of half turned and he said, Gene, I w I'd like to introduce you to Malcolm McDowell. He kind of looked at me, turned around and walked off. Uh. <laughs> but, you know, um, I totally got it. I totally understood, you know, that I'd taken his glorious moment and sort of put a a different spin on it for other generations and you know I guess I, I kind of ruined his moment in a way yeah well but of course it was in homage to him it was because it was so amazing and so indelible in me as a person that I came blurted it out and started singing it I mean, clearly done out of love there's no way you, yeah, you pick no. a song that you hate and do something like no, that no with no it. So, no no yeah well, it's a pleasure uh, meeting and talking to you, and uh, good well, luck you. in all you do. And uh, thank you well, so very much nice for talking to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.